Hi everyone, welcome back to Poisonous People. Today we are concluding our mini course with our 10th and final video on gaslighting and it seems appropriate to end the series with a video on how to defend yourself against gaslighting. So that's what this video is about and we're gonna get into it right now. So the first thing that you need to do in order to defend yourself against gaslighting, it might sound very elementary, but it's simply to understand what gaslighting is. It's not just so you can recognize it when it happens, but it's also because we want to reduce the confusion that you yourself might be experiencing. One of the things that I encounter a lot as a therapist is there are people with anxiety and then I have people that have anxiety about their anxiety. So when you're experiencing gaslighting, you don't wanna make it worse by having to have this anxiety over whether or not you're actually being gaslighted. So I would really advise you to think about these things for yourself and ask yourself at what point do I say, yes, this is gaslighting, no, this isn't. And I know it sounds so basic, but I'm telling you, this is going to take a load off your shoulders because when you're actually in the gaslighting moment, you don't wanna have this extra added confusion as to whether or not it's actually happening. The second thing that you need to do in order to defend yourself against gaslighting Gaslighting is to approach gaslighting from the proper framework. And that is you need to understand why gaslighting is happening. Gaslighting can't happen unless you allow it to happen. So think of it this way. If you are allergic to peanuts, you don't spend your time learning about how peanuts are processed and sold. If there's a peanut based dish, you don't care about how that, that dish is made. You just avoid the peanuts. It, it doesn't matter what's going on in the peanut world. All that matters to you is what you're gonna do about those peanuts. And so you're gonna avoid the peanuts. You're also going to be prepared in case you are exposed to a peanut. You need to know how you're going to react to those peanuts. How long do I have before I start breaking out in hives? Or do I need an EpiPen? So when it comes to understanding why gaslighting happens, the gaslighter is kind of like the peanut. You're left Less concerned with studying the peanut and you're going to be more concerned with studying how you respond to the peanut. What kind of allergy, what kind of allergic reaction do you experience when you're exposed to the peanut? And the real question is, why are you vulnerable to it? And there's only one answer. You don't know what is real. We are gaslighted because we don't really know what is true. If we don't know what we know, we're willing to believe anything. So if the narcissist or other abusive person tells us this is how it is, or you're not remembering correctly, or this is not how it went down, you're going to be a sitting duck. You're going to be a very easy target for gaslighting. So I'm going to quickly review the four sources of knowledge. So let's go through these really quickly and see what some examples of defending ourselves against gaslighting might look like for each of these four sources of knowledge. The first source of knowledge that we're going to look at is our perception. And perception is our experiences and any information that we gain through our five senses. So three strategies that you may want to use in order to maximize your perception and your trust in your own perception is first to use mindfulness. Really pay attention when you're in the moment 
moment. Start paying attention to little details. Right now we're having a conversation about what our plans are for this Saturday. I am standing up, he's sitting at the table, he's wearing a blue shirt. You're really maximizing that experience so that way when you recall it later, it's gonna be that much more vivid. Other tools you may wanna use is to keep a journal or record conversations. These recordings are not to be heard by other people. You're not gonna use these recordings against the narcissist. The recordings are there just so that later we can draw upon them to validate our memory. The second origin of knowledge is memory. And memory is very closely tied to perception. And that's because memory is simply stored perception. What you do in the moment is going to do wonders for your memory. And as you can see, the same exact tools for perception are listed here for memory. And that's mindfulness, journaling, and recording. When you really focus and concentrate on the memory when it's going in, when you're actually experiencing it, you're going to find that those memories are going to serve you much better than if you were just kind of half focused or not paying attention the first time. And I'm also going to add that it might benefit you to strengthen your memory by downloading some memory games on your phone. When you do those memory building exercises, as you see your memory improving in those games and exercises, when you're in the moment and the narcissist or abusive person is challenging your memory, you're gonna be able to say, you know what? There's nothing wrong with my memory. I have another source to prove to me and I have another experience to prove to me that there's nothing really wrong with my memory. In fact, my memory is improving. Next, we have logic and reason. Now, this is one that trips up a lot of people. Narcissists use excellent logic. But the problem is they're always starting with a false premise. So most of us get distracted by the logical argument, which is very sound. And we don't pay attention to the fact that the entire premise that the argument is built on is completely flawed. When you find yourself in one of these logical arguments with the narcissist, I want you to begin to notice, use your perception, begin to notice the premise and just silently tell yourself the premise is flawed. So you don't wanna be dazzled by flawed logic. And this is a big rule here. I say this to my clients all the time. Don't even bother. Don't try to reason with someone who is unreasonable. You're going to be wasting your energy and your breath. The other thing you want to do is you want to listen and just let the other person talk. Let them spew their ridiculous arguments because that actually gives you more time to be focused and alert and mindful. So while they're talking, you can be more in tune to your perception. And finally, you want to listen to your in internal dialogue. So instead of arguing with the narcissist, when you're in that argument, I want you to have the argument, but have the argument in your mind. Start refuting their points, not out loud to them, because they're just going to scream and yell. They're going to reject what you have to say. They're going to come up with rebuttals and they're going to come up with objections to any points you make. So you're going to respond to them in your head and you're gonna refute what they're saying in your head. Remember, the point of this is not to win an argument with the narcissist. The point of this is to defend yourself against gaslighting. So we're building up our knowledge. We are becoming confident in what we know. So part of that is trusting the voice from within, and in order to trust the voice from within, you can't keep listening to the narcissist. And finally, we have testimony, and I think this is the single most important factor in defending yourself against gaslighting. 
testimony is basically what other people have to say. One of the reasons why gaslighting is so successful is because the narcissist or other abusive person is keeping you isolated. And when you're isolated, you don't get other opinions coming in. The narcissist is controlling the information that you receive. One of the number one reasons people are gaslighted is because they are putting their full trust in what the other person is telling them. So when it comes to testimony, you want to put less emphasis on the narcissist's testimony and you want to start to get the input of others. This can be friends, therapists. It can even be videos that you watch online. It can be articles that you read. But the bottom line is you want to do anything you possibly can in order to reduce your isolation. It all starts with protecting and fortifying your mind. Remember to question everything, even this video. Come to your own conclusions about everything you learn and trust your epistemology. Soon you will become an independent critical thinker and you'll be immune to gaslighting. I'm Jen Guerriero and this is Poisonous People. Thanks for watching.